Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In this video, I want to talk about lighting, camera setup, and render settings that I use in Blender for scientific figures and why. I'm going to do that using this device stack that I modeled in a previous video. The tutorial is linked in the description if you're interested. Right away, the first thing that I do for most figures like this is I come to the render properties, I go down to film, and I enable transparent backgrounds. I want to do that because most of the figures that I make are either going to go into a paper, a PowerPoint presentation, or onto a poster. I don't want a background. I don't want shadows. I don't want to have to color match the background to the white of the PowerPoint slide or have to deal with deleting it later. I just want the figure itself. And so a transparent background is a huge benefit. It's also going to make my render times a little bit faster because I don't have to worry about rendering cast shadows or bounce lighting. In terms of the actual lighting, I pretty universally use the material preview lighting that you get, and I almost always render an Eevee as a result, because I've set up my entire scene using this lighting, I already know that I'm happy with the way it looks, so unless I'm going to be dealing with glass, or unless I really have a reason to use cycles for, say, texture displacement, realistic glass, or complex shadows, I'm going to use Eevee, because I want to render my scene as fast as possible. This will render in three seconds, Whereas in cycles, this would render in closer to five minutes on my computer. A lot of people that I've worked with in science do not have powerful machines. They're working from laptops that are usually a few years old. So AI denoising and RTX cards are great. Most people that these tutorials are sort of catering towards will not have access to those things. So let's talk about lighting very quickly. Like I mentioned, I like to use the default lighting setup. And so I already have a tutorial on how I would do that. But the short version is, I'm just going to open another window, come down, grab a shader editor, change object to world, hit shift A, add in an environment texture, connect it into the background, and then open up to either an HDRI that I've downloaded from HDRI Haven for free, or I'm actually going to come to the world file in the Blender documents, which actually comes with Blender. So if you just go to wherever you installed Blender and then find the version enter into data files, come to studio lights and world, you can actually use the default lighting. So in this case, I actually want to use studio lighting because I think that it looks pretty good for this scene. You can see kind of like that. I like that. Once I've done that and I've got my lighting set up and it's already pretty out of the box, I didn't have to worry about setting up area lights or anything like that. The way that I'm going to move my camera is pretty simple. I'm going to find where in the viewport I kind of like, then hit control, alt, and numpad zero, and that's going to roughly snap my camera to that point. I'm then going to grab my camera, hit N, open this side panel, hit come to view, and then hit lock camera to view. Once I've done that, I, my camera is actually going to follow me as I move around the scene. and once I've found a place that I'm happy with and I think that's going to look good for the figure that I want, I'm very simply going to uncheck that box and now I'm essentially done. All I have to do is actually come to the render settings, so I want to make sure again, film transparent is enabled, and I'm going to render an EV. You can see if I hit Z and drag up into rendered view, I actually have the exact same lighting pretty much as I do in material preview, so I already know what I'm getting with this figure, and it's pretty much exactly what I want. So if I hit F12 in real time, you're following my computer through this. And there we go, three seconds, 3.13 seconds, we have our finished figure just like that. If this were cycles, I don't even think I could actually record and do the rendering at the same time with any reasonable time frame. And I'm not running on a laptop right now. This is actually a reasonably decent few-year-old desktop. If you're dealing with something that's kind of cartoon-like already, there's generally very little point. So don't waste time on that because if you can iterate through multiple versions of this figure and say, you know, I didn't really like the way that render actually turned out. I maybe want to come over here and get it from this side. Then again, you can just move over there, control alt numpad zero, snap your camera, move it in the view again, and then try it from here. And now you have another look at it. Three seconds to render, no problem. In terms of the actual output settings I'm going to use, I'll just come to output properties. 920 by 1080 is kind of this default. That's fine if you don't need it to be that size, then shrink it down so it's a little bit smaller, but that's personal preference. I personally render almost everything in PNG just because I know it's actually gonna give me transparent background. And if I really care about kind of how well it is gonna scale, then I'll either just multiply this value up to 200% or 300%. That's not the best way of doing things, but it will work for if you have to put this on a poster or something. Change the color depth to 16 and then bring the compression to say 50 instead of 15. If you do that, you're going to get a reasonably good figure. In fact, for the sake of argument, I'll go ahead and say 
300% here, 16 and 50. We'll render that now. This will take a little bit longer. So even that render, that was 19 seconds as opposed to if I wanted to render the same thing in cycles, it would be closer to five minutes. You can see that I can really zoom in here. This is the text and I'm right up on there. I'm not really running into any problems with pixelation. I could confidently put this on a poster and not have to worry about it looking terrible or fuzzy. So just to do a very quick summary here, I like to set everything up in Material Preview, use those lightings. I want to render an EV so that I can get it out of the way very quickly and don't have to worry too much about the power that I'm throwing behind the rendering engine. And generally speaking, I think it's better to render most things on transparent backgrounds just because having that background be transparent is going to be easier for you to work with. That is my advice for lighting, cameras, and render settings in Blender. If you found that at all helpful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, Hopefully go use it to make some figures, and until next time, you have yourself a great old day.